Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris. Today I will show you how to easily paint this festive Santa ornament with a few simple tips, tricks, and techniques. So whether you are a beginner or painting for fun, grab your brushes and let's get started. I designed and painted these ornaments yesterday. I loved how they all turned out. The lesson today is just for the Santa, but if you are interested in step-by-step -step instructions, I did do a pattern for the entire set and the information is listed below. This is an MDF book stack ornament and I'm going to just lightly seal it with multi-purpose sealer. It's just going to provide a smoother surface let it dry and lightly sand. Base coating the entire surface with Hauser Light Green. Sometimes when working with different colors, it's best to have a nice bright base. Put two coats on, let it dry in between, masking off the top section. And I'm going to do the same thing with Hauser Medium Green, base coat the rest of the ornament. That way the greens won't get too dark and heavy. You'll still have a little bit of a brighter base below it and they kind of glow instead of becoming just too dark. Mask that off and paint that bottom section with Hauser Dark Green. Just really a nice gradation of color. Transfer the uh, image of the Santa onto the ornament and base coating it using my half inch awesome angle and warm beige. This is gonna take a couple coats, especially when you're working with lighter colors, it may even take two or three, but it's always best to have several light coats instead of one heavy coat. It just results in a smoother, more even finish on it. And this is a, the second coat and you can see what a difference that makes. I like using the awesome angle because that point really lets me get in and sharpen up those edges. The hat was melon and I'm base coating or top coating it with watermelon slice. It's a little translucent so that melon base on there just helps it to become a brighter more festive Christmas red. I had a little spot on there just took some water and wiped it off. Using the toe of my brush and dried clay to put a little bit of shading below the brim and down the sides of his face. And that, let that dry and I'm doing the same thing with watermelon slice to add a little blush to the cheeks. Sometimes I'll go back and add a couple layers as opposed to trying to get it on too heavy at the same time. Eye placement, I just use my pencil to mark the centers using my painter's pal for the template to create the oval eyes. It's such a great way to get perfect sized eyes. They're always gonna match and just be perfect. I'm using soft black, shading around the eyes with my eighth inch awesome angle and dried clay. Don't get too much right below the eyes or he'll start to look just a little bit tired. Swipe some under the eyebrow placement also using my Epic Script Liner and Portobello to base coat those eyebrows in. And they're not perfect. I like them to be just a little bit loose. Eighth inch angle, I'm just gonna swipe a little Snow White on the bottom and right side, and then go back and add those little beautiful sparkly highlights in the eyes. Uh, deep burgundy shading on the base of the hat, and then I'll add a little soft black to deepen that shading up a little bit. Using my number five radical round and portobello and I'm just basing in where the beard is, keeping that hair direction the way that it's supposed to go. I don't fuss too much with the background. It's when we go to put on the details that we can be a little more particular how they're going to look. Same brush, I'm just tapping it in, kind of smashing the paint in there to get that fluffy effect. I will use my deer foot to really add those little furry details, but just for placement, just kind of tapping them in and stroking in where the beard and mustache are going to be. And I'm just letting the brush follow the contour of the hair. I, I kind of jump back and forth. I don't finish one thing completely and then go on to the next. 
if you notice I painted the eyebrows, the hat, the hair, the mustache, all the same color, I'm putting them in at the same time. And that way I can jump around and work in different areas without letting, um, waiting for, spending time just sitting there waiting for it to dry. That way I can go back and kind of touch it up and work on it. And it just all evolves pretty much at the same time. Stroking in a little bit of a highlight with melon on the top left of the hat. And I'm using my quarter inch awesome angle for that. Loaded the Deerfoot Stippler with sand gray. Very lightly tapping in. Don't get it too heavy because there's going to be another brighter layer. We like to have layers of brightness and that just shows a lot of depth. It's super easy to create but it looks amazing when it's finished. And I'll do the same thing on the pom-pom. Kind of have to juggle between the hair and the pom-pom and the mustache because one's in front of the other. So you kind of go back and forth and work on each section. The hair's underneath the hat. So I'm taking some of that sand gray on the toe of my radical round just to fill that in. His beard is white but we're working in gray tones right now. And this is basically the background tones. And I'm waiting on that pom-pom because it's in front of the beard. So I wanna stroke that beard in first and then lay the pom-pom over top of that. But it's also behind the mustache. So this is, you just toggle back and forth on that. Now, if your brush is not flowing well, you don't have enough moisture on it, make sure that you can apply quite a bit of paint before you have to reload. If not, add a little more moisture to your brush. You want it just to glide across the surface. Continue adding, and I'm using my number two radical round. Started out with a number five for big strokes in the background. Bumped down to a number two radical round for a little more defined detail. And when I go in to add the white, I'm using the 18 knot Epic Script Liner lot smaller detail and that's what makes it look like it's just incredibly detailed is adding this final touch and just stay on the toe of the brush make sure you have enough water in your brush that you can flow and keep nice soft tiny lines loaded my deerfoot stippler with snow white and you can see how that brightens up the brim and I'm mostly putting it along the top, but I'm pulling some of it down. It's just not quite as bright as it gets closer to the forehead. Loaded my number or half inch incredible comb with incredible detail. Just going back with the Deerfoot Stippler to add a little bit of fluff to the pom-pom with sand gray and then go back with the Snow White. And remember to dry completely between layers of paint so that you don't get any mud. To do the mustache and the beard, I'm using the Epic Script Liner. When I put the under layers in with the Portobello and the Sand Gray, I used bigger brushes, kind of slip slap that on there just really quickly, mostly concerned with the direction of the uh, hair and the beard but not so much with fine detail. It just provides a great backdrop for these little tiny fine lines. This is where all the interest is created. And I've loaded my brush well, a lot of water in my brush. That way I don't have to reload often and I can get these nice long fluid strokes and spend most of my time painting instead of reloading. So it just makes it more fun. I think this is one of my favorite parts is now that the base coats are dropped in, going back and just fine tuning and putting on that beautiful detail and just watch it evolve. Now with the incredible comb, because the paint has to be very thin need to stay on the tips and you'll get those beautiful wispy lines, layers, lots of layers. Going in now with very, very, very thin charcoal gray. If it's too heavy, it turns the beard brown and definitely don't want it to look brown. 
But before that, I decided, oops, I forgot his mouth. So I went in with deep burgundy to paint the inside of his mouth area. And I just used my number two radical round to fill that in. Loaded my Epic Script Liner with Melon. And that's a little bit bright for his lip, but it's just the base coat so that I can make a nice rosy color and still have that bright glow on it. Um, watermelon Slice was too red and Melon was too pink, so I mixed Watermelon Slice and a Warm Beige and got kind of a more lip tone color. Went in and flood a little bit of deep burgundy along the bottom edge of the lip, darken the top with a little bit in the mouth with a little bit of soft black, and then just add that white little bit of shine on the bottom of the lip. And look how, gosh, it just really looks wet and just turned out perfect. And I keep going back with more detail on the mustache. You can't add too much. A little bit of that charcoal gray shading along the base of the brim just separates it out beautifully from the hair down the center of the beard or mustache and I use the toe to shade and then I pull it out so that it goes down through those layers instead of just shading across. See how I pull it down, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down following the direction of the beard. This is where I separate everything out, the pom-pom, the mustache, the hair below the hat, and the hair above the mustache. Separation, contrast. Just make sure it doesn't get too dark. If it does, not a big deal. Just go back with a little bit more of the brighter colors. I went back and darkened the brim up. I don't want the brim to look the same as the mustache and the beard. So I did go back and, and darken the brim and the pom-pom to make it stand out a little bit more, separated out. And I'm using like a kind of a choppy float, not a smooth float. I lost my shading behind the brim, so I'm just going back with a little bit of soft black to darken that up. I tried just deep burgundy. It wasn't dark enough, so I just enhanced it with a touch of soft black. Don't want a brown pom-pom, so I'm going in and look with Snow White, just those few little touches over that dark brown. Look how fluffy. It's almost sparkly. Love how this turned out. It's just really pretty. And it's just a culmination of all those layers and layers and layers. Nothing's hard, it's just layers. This is more detail to, to brighten up those little areas. The tips of the mustache, very important for those to stand out. They're a little bit closer, so they're going to be a little bit brighter. Love to pull out those little, little fringes along the side. They really stand out great contrast against that dark green. I thought the mustache looked a little bit uh, coarse. I wanted it to be a little bit fuller and softer. And just be careful when adding the, the layers of white that it doesn't become solid. And I th think that's what makes it really nice about working in layers. Using the painter's palette to stencil the nose warm beige. He's going to look so much better with a nose. And I'm shading around the outside edge with dried clay and also deepening that shading underneath the eyebrow and kind of along the eye socket toward the outer edges. Brighten the center of the nose with a little bit of Snow White and just softly blend it in. And remember, everything is dried. A little bit of a rosy watermelon slice on there to make his nose rosy. And then just go in with a touch of Snow White with the stylus and pull across a comma stroke. Sparkle those cheeks up a little bit. Look how he twinkles. Let's add some greenery on his hat, starting out with Hauser Dark Green. Very sparse. 
don't fill this in too heavy. There's many layers. Just kind of quickly base that in there so you know where the uh, pine branches are placed. Going back in with Hauser Medium Green. Another quick layer, not solid, just layers and layers. We'll fill it up nicely. Once that's in there, going back with Hauser Light Green to brighten it up and then add a little bit of celery shoot, especially up there on the red part because that seems to be extra dark. So add a little more highlight up there to make that stand out. Always about contrast. I was going to stencil the berries, but I'm just using the handle end of my brush to dip dot watermelon sliced berries. Kind of go in and remove some of the excess with a clean handle and shading a bit of Hauser Dark Green around the base of the berries. And now they're dry. I'm shading deep burgundy along the base and right side of the berries. Adding Snow White highlights on them, top left side. And brighten up those eyebrows. Kind of look. The mustache is nice and bright, but those eyebrows, all of a sudden, I hadn't paid attention to them. And they only had one or two layers of white on them, so they kind of looked a little bit dark. Again, we're going for a white beard and white mustache and white eyebrows. A little bit of shading under the nose. Keep this minimal and pull that shading into the direction of the mustache. Once it's on there, it's a little bit too brown. So that just requires a few little added hairs to kind of help that shading sink down in but still be visible. Just like that looks fantastic. And touch those tips up. This is my favorite part. I think I said that, but adding this detail, I think that's so much fun. There's uh, not much contrast between the tip of the mustache and the hair, so went in with a little more charcoal gray just to kind of separate those out a little bit more strongly. And if it becomes too bright, add some white again. Now I'm going in with Aqua Sky. This is my favorite part. I said the other was, but I, that's not true. This is Aqua Sky. Oh my gosh, just add a few hints of color. This is just a very soft tint. Make sure you don't turn anything blue. This is just a, just a little bit of a glow on the pom-pom, on the brim, the right side of the beard and maybe a little bit there in the corner where the hat is. Very, very thin, very, very subtle, very, very beautiful. And it just elevates it to a different level. Anywhere it's just too boring or plain, add a hint of the aqua sky. Look what a huge difference. His, his mustache was too blue, so I just wiped it back a little bit. But look at the greenery now. Add a little bit on those berries. Think that's too much? No, it just looks fabulous. Be brave, put a little blue in there. An unexpected bit of color. A little bit of color makes such a huge difference and I think that should be my motto because it's so true. I did put a little bit in the eyebrows but I think I toned it down too much. I thought it needed a little more shading under there so I'm putting a little more charcoal gray. We didn't have that color on there before so now I'm adding it back in and it's very strong, but I have that blue in there. I've got the charcoal gray. Just need to go back over it with a few little strokes of Snow White. And now we have all those beautiful colors in there. It really sets it off and looks fantastic. The lettering is all created with my Epic Script Liner and Snow White. I did use two coats of paint on this. The first coat is just very thinned Snow White and it's just mostly for placement. Please note that I did use white graphite paper 
or trace tracing paper instead of the black it's so much easier to if you have to remove any of it that black is just really hard to remove uh, against white so use white graphite or tracing transfer paper and if there's any that's still showing it just looks like the letter my favorite splattering brush and it has those long bristles they're nylon you can just flip paint you don't get your fingers messy you have very good control over where it goes I didn't want it on Santa's face um, just wanted it around if you get anywhere you don't want just get a damp uh, cotton tip swab and remove it that way I wanted to fill it in with dip dots but I should have waited until after I put the sparkles in uh, because some of them I, I didn't care for where they were at so kind of do the sparkles first and then the dip dots if there's any areas that need a little more putting down the, the sparkle pal just scraping over it with modeling paste and I like the plastic stencil or palette knives because they're very pliable easy to work with this one's a metal one and I didn't but you can see how it scrapes across and fills that in just lift it up it's a perfect delicate little sparkle immediately coat it with glamour dust and really should wait until they dry it takes a little bit longer for them to dry but it's so easy if they're wet and you get one in the template over it or it's just really easy to smear it so I would suggest waiting until it dries before you add more I did a few big ones and then a few little tiny ones to fill in like I said I should have waited on those dip dots because uh, some of them didn't need to be there it was much easier for placement with the little sparkles and just put that in there lift it straight up and when you put the texture paste on only swipe across it two maybe three times if you keep going across it it's almost like spreading peanut butter over a piece of a slice of bread just very light and you can see it filling in the voids on the stencil and you know when it's perfect do make sure when you are finished using the modeling paste that you clean your template well because if it dries on it it's really difficult to remove in addition to adding the glamour dust on the sparkles I loaded my deer foot with a little bit of varnish and tapped it on the brim and the pom-pom and lightly sprinkled that with the glamour dust and then I used the epic script liner and varnish to add a few strokes and some glamour dust on some of the pine needles the only thing left to do is add a little bit of wire or you could use cording baker's twine decorative ribbon to make a hanger and I think it turned out absolutely adorable I hope you learned some new tips tricks and techniques let me know if you have any comments or questions I would love to hear from you remember everything that I use will be listed below if you like what you see please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel that way you won't miss out on future upcoming videos remember a little bit of paint makes a big difference thank you for joining me today and I look forward to our next painting adventure together